As it turns out, this is going to be the first of three videos that I do on this topic. And what you are watching here are the answers to questions that I received on Instagram. It's a question and answer contest in what's called the story area of Instagram. And if you don't follow me on Instagram and you are a YouTube subscriber, this may all be a little mysterious to you, but I think you will still enjoy the questions and answers that uh, this video will provide to you. Um, we're going to cover a lot of different subjects here. Uh, people were allowed in this contest to ask any kind of question they wanted, whether it was a personal question about me or a question about my involvement in the online pet bug hobby or questions about care or Maybe some people just wanted to see an animal or, you know, a particular insect or arthropod that they uh, wanted to, they wanted to see through my eyes and hear me talk about it a little bit, I guess. So originally I didn't intend to make three separate videos, but normally when I do these question and answer contests, my answers consist of a few sentences. Well, as it turns out, as I've begun this, I've noticed that my answers can be rather long, which may or may not be of interest <laughs> to everybody, but it is what it is. And so there are going to be three videos and the winners on Instagram, uh, for each video there will be a winner and I will provide instructions in the comments section down below about how to uh, claim your prizes. So thank you very much for watching and of course, if you have any questions, any of you YouTubers out there have any questions about any of this, please feel free to ask your questions down below. And I promise you, we will work up to doing some questions here on YouTube too, some question and answer contests. And uh, please understand that I'm relatively new here to YouTube. I've only restarted my YouTube channel about a year ago now, whereas, uh, I have about 2,000 subscribers here on YouTube. I have uh, a little over 75,000 on Instagram, and then I also have a TikTok account with about 33,000 followers. So I've still only been active in social media for a couple of years, but obviously I've been in the online pet bug hobby for a very long time, and so I have a lot to say. <laughs> thank you for your questions, and always thank you for watching. So the first question was, do I have Christmas plans and do I like eggnog? As for eggnog, yes, I love it. And I may or may not actually purchase any, but I do enjoy it. I do, however, like seasonal products like this. I just picked this up at the grocery store very recently. I'm going to have a little bit of ice cream. It's probably only the fourth time of the year I've purchased ice cream, but I'm going to put a spoonful of it in my coffee because I'm a huge coffee drinker. And in the background here, you can see some produce that I had pulled out earlier, some things that I'm going to be feeding off to roaches and isopods and millipedes and probably other kinds of bugs because it's produce that's going bad in my refrigerator or in my sad, sad, sad fruit basket. Next question was, how am I? Simple question, simple answer. I'm good. I make sure every day that I'm good, and I do that by staying very busy all of the time, from feeding the animals, to packing the orders, and to keeping myself very busy on social media. Uh, it's probably midnight right now, and I just kicked off the contest a little while ago. This is the third question that I'm answering. I've got six questions so far, and so I'm just gonna keep plugging away like I always do till I'm too tired to do it anymore, and then I'm gonna to go to bed, and then I'm gonna get up and do it all again tomorrow, just like I have year after year for decades now. Thank you very much. Macropanesthia rhinoceros, the rhino roach. Got a smaller one down there, and then this one here. This may be the mother of this one over here. Can't really remember. I've had these ones for well, about four years now, and prior to that, they were cared for for three years by someone who had purchased them from me originally. And so they're seven years old now, and someone else raised them for the first three years of their lives. Pretty awesome. I had sold them to him as babies. 
And so it was funny when I asked him when I was purchasing them back, I said, well, where did you get them from? And he said, well, I purchased them from you three years ago. The species lives for about 10 years and it's just a giant. Um, this one isn't even a particularly large specimen, but you can see how bulky it is. They're thicker than my thumb and takes up a good portion of the palm of my hand. This here is a female and the males are generally a little bit bigger and have a really cool looking scoop up on their pronotum, almost like a rhino horn, hence the name. A cockroach that lives 10 years, a very valuable species, a very desirable species. Everybody wants these and they are very expensive to acquire. I'm waiting on some of my adult females who have spent time with males to produce young and everybody else is waiting too. Thanks for your question, Invertebrate Dude. Invertebrate Dude asked this question on Instagram. He's been a pillar in the pet bug online hobby for a very, very long time now. Always good to hear from you and thanks for participating. The question is, if you could keep any species, what would it be? And I'm always hesitant to answer that question for a couple of reasons. Number one, I don't actually need to keep it to enjoy seeing it. It would probably be my biggest bucket list dream to go down to, I think it's French Guiana, and some other nearby South American countries, I think, to look for a specimen of Titanus giganteus, a giant stag beetle, one of the largest insects in the world. And I would particularly like to see a larva of that species because according to Google uh, resources, uh, the larval phase is unknown to science or uh, people have never seen it before. So that's sort of a dream of mine and uh, my go-to answer for a question like this. Most expensive insect and what did it cost me? I don't have anything scripted when I'm answering these questions. I literally just read them and then I go and turn my camera on and then answer them. So I don't even know what the most expensive insect I've ever purchased is. I've been in this hobby for a really, really long time and I don't really think about things in terms of what I want to purchase individually. Because I'm a dealer, I purchase things at a price that allows me to then resell them. I don't really re uh, take things in, acquire things to keep for just my own personal pleasure. I'm way too busy uh, running the business and uh, bringing things in to sell to you. <laughs> and so I don't go out on a limb and purchase uh, high value things just for my own personal interest. And there really aren't a lot of things like that in the hobby. Um, you may be able to find things like African uh, giant black millipedes through various Facebook groups or something like that, but I don't really run in those circles. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's sort of coming in over the borders illegally, gets smuggled in, that probably has high dollar value. I don't do business with any of the people like that because that could in turn get me into trouble. And so for me, I would have to say like the rhino roaches would be an easy answer to this question. I have purchased breeding groups of them and you will have seen a video clip on that earlier in uh, this particular video about the rhino roaches where I talked about that a little bit. Um, other than that, I would say that uh, I really look at things, uh, at least from my perspective in terms of what I'm paying for a shipment, often a large group of uh, multiple species. And so, you know, I might spend a couple thousand dollars on an order. And then of course the game is to flip it and resell each thing, you know, shipping out in many cases, individual specimens from that larger order. It's a lot of work. I tend to keep my prices very low. And so 
the game for me isn't about um, getting any high dollar thing, uh, any really spectacular species. Uh, I'm just always in survival mode looking for opportunities where I can make both the person that I'm purchasing from happy and then also my end customer. My Next question was, will common household cockroaches cause me any harm if I handle them? And I would definitely say that the answer to that is no way, no harm, nothing to worry about. If you're simply handling them and you have any concerns afterwards, just wash your hands with warm water and soap. You know, same kind of basic recommendations for cleanliness as anything else. Um, some people are allergic to roaches, however, and it's one of the things they test for if you have asthma or uh, suffer from other kinds of allergies. And so uh, even keepers will sometimes develop allergies to them over time once a bunch of frass, and those are the droppings, the feces, um, shed exoskeletons and such build up in the tanks. but. I have no allergies to them whatsoever, and I don't expect that I ever will. Thank you for your question. I adjusted the camera just slightly so that maybe you can see the whole shirt. Um, the next question is, what animals are you interested in besides bugs? And honestly, I'm not really that interested in other animals. I love everything in nature, I always have, but bugs have always been the pinnacle of diversity, as I often like to say. It, never a dull day if you're interested in bugs, you go outside. The birds, I love birds, they're beautiful, but they're always far away and they're always moving away from you very quickly. If you can see pictures of them or if you have a pair of binoculars with you, you might get fleeting glimpses of them, they're beautiful, but the bugs, you can get up close to them. Uh, large animals, uh, we have deer here in my backyard. I saw a group of about uh, 10 of them crossing the street in front of my house the other day. It was pretty neat to see. I'm right here in the Portland metro area and yeah, you can see the green space behind me. It's quite beautiful. I see birds flying through the trees all the time. And um, my just experience of living is, uh, is uh, wonderful every day through just looking out this window as I work over here at my computer. And I see just nature happening out there, lots of bees flying around uh, along with the birds, um, the changing seasons, I love everything about nature. But bugs will always be number one for me. I have always sort of enjoyed owls. I went through a phase when I was younger where I liked rhinos. <laughs> Um, I don't even know why I'm laughing. It's just funny to think about favorite things. Uh, everybody always wants to know what my favorite this and that is. My favorite mantis, my favorite insect in general, and uh, my canned go-to answer always is my favorite thing is the next insect I see that I've never seen before. And so you will get tired of hearing me say it probably far sooner than I get tired of saying it. but. Um, after insects, if I had to pick a next favorite group of things, and not including people and foods, <laughs> because those are other things that I like quite a bit, um, I really enjoy plants. And for example, when I look out in my backyard right now, um, plants can be seasonal, but they're also always out there. And here in Oregon, um, looking out the window or being outside, uh, regardless of the season, it's always green, and uh, it's a color I love, and it's, uh, it's an expression of nature, uh, and uh, you can always go outside and see plants, and so plants mean a lot to me as a group. Thank you for your question. The next question was, have I ever kept trilobite beetles? And you'll see these popping up on social media pretty frequently. These images here are on Google Images. They are related, they're in the same family Lycidae as ones called netwing beetles here in the United States, which look like this. We see ones like this up here in the Pacific Northwest, and I've seen ones like this and this in Arizona. What I have seen that looks very much like these trilobite beetles, however, are a species called Pterodus obscuripennis. 
and these are in the firefly family, Lampyridae. And I put these images up on Google now seven years ago in 2012. I remember finding this specimen at a local park when I lived in the city of Sherwood. And this is what they do. They are larvae or larviform, and they have two glow spots on them. And this one lived for several years just like this, and here's an image where I showed it feeding within the shell of a snail and glowing at the same time, or uh, bioluminescing, even better than glowing. Tarotus obscura penis. A great question. Thank you very much. Next question is, how do you get your beetles to pupate? And the person asking said that they had lost all of theirs during that point in the process. Um, always a difficult question to answer. Things seem to be going really well all the way up to a certain point. Now, we have to ask to give context to this. It would be helpful to know how many beetles you had. You know, some pe sometimes people will say that they had really bad results, but you find out that they only had one or two or three specimens. Um, the quality of the substrate is really important in raising beetles to maturity. Um, if you have them going for years on a low quality substrate, they may never pupate. They may just end up dying. Um, if you have, however, been providing a quality substrate, and I do recommend something like oak flake soil, wild collected oak wood or other uh, wood from hardwood trees that are similar to oak are fine, but the more seasoned keepers tend to use a fermented oak flake substrate. And that's a little outside the context of answering this question. But if you've given them a quality substrate and you maintain the proper humidity in the soil uh, or the substrate, then and you leave them alone, then you should probably be fine in getting them through to pupation. A lot of people get antsy, uh, impatient. They will dig into the substrate and they will pull the pupae out. That moves them around a little bit, or maybe they have some worms or something else in the soil, or too many beetles in the substrate, and one comes along, another larva, for example, and might disturb the pupa. Um, some people get impatient and they crack them open to see what's going on and that can potentially interrupt the process. Um, but usually I would guess that it's probably a function of substrate quality um, or disturbance if your pupa comes out imperfect. Uh, it's also difficult again to draw conclusions and to call yourself a failure if you were only working with a couple of them. And so I would recommend you just stick with it and perhaps start with a larger group of them next time and try, try again. Thank you for the question. The first bug that got you started in the bug business. Um, it's been a long, long road. I'm not sure I know how to answer that question. Um, you could say it was the first bug that I saw outside and the earliest recorded uh, memory that my parents have of me interacting with a bug was when I was very, very, very small and I went outside and I was observing pill bugs, also called roly polies or sometimes potato bugs. And I picked one up and it rolled up into a little ball and I must have had experience with balls at that point because I threw it down at the ground and then remarked to my parents that bug balls only bounce one time. And so there's that. And then the first bug that I remember keeping as a pet ever, and I might ask my parents about this. Uh, oh, wait, I know I had sea monkeys when I was a kid. Um, and in my memory, I, I remember the shelf that they were on in a particular house. And so I know that this was before 
I was in elementary school, so I may have been in preschool or maybe even before that, but I had sea monkeys and I also had, I think they're called crystal rocks. Um, they're those little colored rocks that you drop into the uh, water solution of some kind and then they form these uh, stalagmites, stalactites. Anyway, they, they grow up from the bottom to the top. Um, stalagmites, I guess, then. Um, beautiful colors. And I, I can remember that shelf in a room I can barely remember. And I have a book from that time, too, that I'll share with you guys at some point, I'm sure, um, and talk about where I wrote my name backwards, the E's in my name backwards in that book. But um, so I would have to say that sea monkeys were probably my first bug pet. Um, people, people sort of fluidly use the word bug, but I have my own definition for it. And everybody, in my uh, opinion, is welcome to have their own definition of the word bug. It's not something that I ever like to argue about. It's, for some people, it's a real hot topic. <laughs> um, later, I do remember getting this little screened cage from my parents. Uh, it was wooden, it was called the Bug Barn, and it had a metal screen over it, and there was a cork in the end that you could insert your pet bug into. And I remember having a flower crab spider in the genus Misumina that I had collected off of a, a bush in my yard, a butterfly bush, Budlia. Um, and I remember feeding 11 bumblebees to it during the course of its life and being fascinated by the fact that uh, these larger bumblebees that were capable of stinging uh, were no match for this beautiful yellow spider that was probably half to a third their mass. Um, and the spider had those two beautiful red lines on its abdomen. You can look it up. Uh, flower crab spider, Misumina. And interestingly, I have been an employee here at uh, Bugs in Cyberspace whose name is Jessica, and you will see her frequently on my Instagram account. And her name there is at Misumina. So that's an interesting coincidence. The next question was if you hadn't made a bug business, what business would you have created? And I suspect that. Uh, many people on YouTube here won't know, but I've been doing these Instagram story question and answer sessions for quite a while now. And so some people sort of have a foundation for asking questions. And I suspect this person recalls that at one point I mentioned that I have an entrepreneurial spirit and my father was an entrepreneur. And you could say he still is, I suppose. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't actually know what I would do if I weren't doing this business. I did work at UPS for 19 years and I probably would have retired out of there if I hadn't built this business on the side. Um, I definitely would say this was my side hustle. Uh, it was a hobby, a hobby that turned into a business uh, that basically took over my life and uh, pushed me out of my career at UPS, which uh, I'm very grateful for. And uh, if you haven't heard me say it before, I am very grateful for all of my customers, not just because they allow me to make a living doing what I love to do, but simply because I do remember a time before the internet where I was just on my own with this hobby. I've always been interested in insects. And so it's wonderful to have been around during the time of the internet and to have established a presence on it very early through putting my website up in 1997, which was years after I became involved in the online hobbies. And so while I cannot say what I might have done if I hadn't been doing the bug thing as a business, um, I, I can say that I probably would have retired from UPS because I didn't mind my job there. I managed to enjoy it. Uh, I worked myself into a good position. I was a shop steward there, and so I represented employees when they were in trouble um, through uh, being a teamster and being a union shop steward, and I enjoyed that aspect of my job as well. Um, I have to imagine that if I weren't interested in bugs that I probably would have done something else with nature, but uh, if you truly, truly love nature, 
bugs are the best. There are the most of them, more species of, of bugs than anything else in nature. And so it's just, it's just where you go. I, I can't explain it any other way. Thank you for the question. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching.